Hi, this is Greg Gilbert, director of the UCSC Forest Ecology Research Plot. I'm so glad you've decided to do an internship with us and to help with the re-census of this exciting research and learning resource at UC Santa Cruz. This module will help make sure that you understand how the trees in the FERP have been mapped and ensure that you have the best experience working on the FERP and collecting the highest quality data. Let's get started. This is a map of the UCSC Forest Ecology Research Plot. It is oriented so that the y-axis runs north-south and the x-axis runs east-west. Each dot on the map represents an individual tree. Each of the 26,000 trees, shrubs, and vines on the FERP have been mapped using a local coordinate system measured in meters. The southwest corner of the plot, indicated by a blue donut, is at zero meters east and zero meters north. For instance, a tan oak tree, Nothalithocarpus densiflora, with tag number 13627, is indicated by the purple star. Its coordinates are 239.9 meters east of the western border and 184.1 meters north of the southern border of the FERP. This system places all the trees in a simple XY grid that makes it easy to find them in the forest and to do calculations about their relative positions and to study their spatial ecology. We use the local coordinate system because GPS does not work well in the forest, and in any case, it's not usually accurate enough to reliably map all the individual stems. So how do we do it? We use trigonometry. Let's take a look, remember some geometry and trigonometry, and get comfortable with the FERP mapping system. Tan Oak number 13627 is 239.9 meters east of the western border and 184.1 meters north of the southern border. To map in the tree, we could simply run out a measuring tape due west from the tree to the plot edge and due south to the plot edge, completing the legs of the right triangle but it's hard to measure long distances through the forest, and it's even harder to measure at right angles over long distances. To make it a bit easier, the FERP is divided into 20 meter by 20 meter quadrats. Note that these are quadrats, meaning a square plot, rather than quadrants, which are quarters of a circle. We'll actually deal with quadrants later on but each quadrat is marked with a PVC post, a yellow flag, and a metal tag that indicates the coordinates of the southwest corner of the quadrat. Each tree then has X and Y coordinates globally within the FERP, here 239.9 meters east and 184.1 meters north, but it also then has more local coordinates within the quadrat. First, Figure out which quadrat a tree belongs to by seeing what range of values between multiples of 20 the tree falls into. Here, 239.9 meters falls between 220 meters and 240 meters east. 184.1 meters falls between 180 and 200 meters north. So, Tan Oak 13627 falls into the quadrat east 220, north 180. Within that quadrat, we can then get the local coordinates by subtracting the east and north values of the quadrat's southwest corner post from the global coordinates of the tree, 239.9 minus 220 and 184.1 minus 180. So, how many meters east and north is Tan Oak 136.27 from the southwest corner of the quadrat. That's right. It is 19.9 meters east and 4.1 meters north of the southwest corner of plot east 220, north 180. Now, how do we map in a tree into that quadrat? Well, at short distances, we can get pretty close to measuring right angles in the forest, but at longer distances, like 19.9 meters, 
this can be hard. So in practice, we take a different approach, and it relies on envisioning the world as a set of triangles. Let's take a look. Remember the Pythagorean theorem. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the legs of a right triangle and c is the hypotenuse. In this case, it's 4.1 squared plus 19.9 squared equals c squared. If we calculate out those squares and then add them together, we get that c squared is 412.82. Taking the square root of both sides, we get that the hypotenuse c is 20.3 meters. So 10 oak 13627 is 20.3 meters in a straight line distance from the east 220 north 180 southwest corner post of that quadrat. So that's cool. We can visualize the right triangle and calculate the hypotenuse, the straight line distance from the corner post to the tree using the Pythagorean theorem. But the Pythagorean theorem requires that you have the lengths of two sides of the triangle to calculate the third. What if we could simply measure the hypotenuse, the straight line distance from a corner post to the tree? Could we then calculate the east and north coordinates? To do that, we have to look at this from a trigonometry perspective, and we need one more measurement. That measurement is the angle theta. How do we do that? So the hypotenuse is the distance from the southwest corner to the tree, and theta is the angle between the adjacent or north leg of the triangle and the hypotenuse. Because the adjacent line is due north, and the angle theta is just the bearing of a compass from the corner post to the tree. We can easily measure straight line distances using a laser rangefinder, or a sonic rangefinder, or a tape measure. You'll learn about those in the field. Then we can measure the angle theta using a sighting compass to get bearings accurate to about a half a degree. We then need one more tool, an analytical tool, to calculate the east and north coordinates. That is, the easting distance, which is the side opposite of the angle theta, and the northing distance, which is the side adjacent to theta. That tool is the immortal Sokatoa. Yes, trigonometry is useful after all. Let's remember Sokatoa. This stands for sine of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. That's s over equals o over h. Cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. c equals a over h. And tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. So just with theta and the hypotenuse, that means we can use sine and cosine to calculate the opposite and adjacent legs of the triangle, which, remember, are the east and north coordinates of the tree. For instance, sine of theta equals the length of the opposite leg over 20.3, which is the length of the hypotenuse. If theta equals 78.5 degrees, then opposite equals sine of 78.5 degrees times 20.3. Sine of 78.5 degrees equals 0 0.98. You can calculate this or look it up in a table. Just make sure you're using degrees and not radians. More on this later. So opposite or easting leg is 0 0.98 times 20.3 or 19.9 meters. Similarly, the cosine of 78.5 degrees is 0 0.20. So the adjacent, or northing leg, is 0 0.20 times 20.3 equals 4.1 meters north of the corner post. Here we successfully calculated the easting and northing coordinates within the quadrat east 220, north 180, using just the straight line distance from the corner post to the tree and the compass bearing from the corner post to the tree. So to summarize, we can easily calculate the easting and northing coordinates from a reference corner post using two parts of the famous Sokatoa mnemonic. Easting equals the sine of theta times the distance, 
and northing equals the cosine of theta times the distance. So to summarize, we can easily calculate the easting and northing coordinates from a reference corner post using two parts of the famous Sokatoa mnemonic. Easting equals the sine of theta times the distance, and northing equals the cosine of theta times the distance. Now those distances are local within a quadrat, here within the east 200 north 180 quadrat. But we want to have the global coordinates for the FERP from the southwest, that is east 0 north 0 corner post, in the southwest corner of the entire plot. To calculate that, we just need to add back in the easting and northing values of the quadrat. In this case, east 200 meters plus 19.9 meters equals 239.9 meters east, and north 180 meters plus 4.1 meters equals 184.1 meters north, which are the original global coordinates for Tanoke 13627. So, all of this review trigonometry takes us to how we mapped all the original trees on the plot. After putting in the corner posts at every 20 by 20 meter interval, we had a grid of nearby corner posts for all the trees. Then from a corner post we could use a laser or sonic rangefinder to measure the straight line distance from the corner post to the tree. We then used a sighting compass to measure the bearing which is the angle theta from the corner post to the tree. We could then calculate the local easting measurement as the sine time of the bearing times the distance and the local northing measurement as the cosine of the bearing times the distance. If we add that quadrat's east coordinate to that local easting we get the global easting and if we add the quadrat's north coordinate to that local northing we get the global northing for the tree. This is actually a pretty quick and easy way to map trees across the whole FERP. There are a couple of additional details that are good to know. First, we measure the distance from the corner post to the surface of the tree, to the bark of the tree. But for a big redwood, for instance, the surface of the tree might be as much as a meter from the center of the tree. So we actually add in half the diameter of the trunk to the distance before we calculate the east and north coordinates. For small trees, this doesn't make much difference, but for big trees, it does. The second bonus complication is for how you make calculations. If you go to a web browser and type in sine of 82, you get the value 0 0.313. This is the value of the sine of 82 radians because most calculators assume they are entering theta in radians, not in degrees. Remember that radians equals degrees times pi over 180. If this isn't ringing bells, look this up online, looking up radians and degrees for a refresher. In the web browser, you can simply specify that you mean degrees, and it will give you the correct answer, which is 0 0.99. If you're working in a spreadsheet, you can either explicitly multiply pi and divide by 180, or you can embed your degrees measurement into the transformation function radians. Third, although so far we've shown all the examples in the upper right corner of the compass quadrant, that is between 0 and 90 degrees, for simplicity, you can actually measure the bearing and distance in any direction around the compass. This means though that the local easting and northing might be negative or positive depending on where it is in relation to the corner post. In this example the tree, shown as a star, is south and west of the corner post. That means the easting would be negative, or further west than the post, and the northing would be negative, further south than the post. The same trigonometry works out, though, because the sine of 215 degrees, here that theta goes all the way around from 0 all the way around to 215 degrees, 
the sine of 215 degrees is negative 0 0.57. And the cosine of 250 degrees is negative 0 0.82. These negative values then ensure that you're adjusting the positions in the correct directions from the original source. Now, as sort of an aside, and as a simplification of this 360 degree relative positioning, we actually have a shortcut that we use when we're mapping in new trees in the plot. Now, usually a new tree will be no more than a few meters from an existing mapped tree, here shown as a conifer in the center. Over this distance, we can use a compass to figure out which way is north from the reference tree, and then measure the north and east offsets in meters from the reference tree, and we know the coordinates of the reference tree, to the new tree, which is shown in the lower left here. The only tricky part is remembering that if the new tree is west of the reference, the offset must be negative, and if it's east, the offset will be positive. If the tree is south of the reference tree, the offset must be negative, but if it's north of the reference tree, it's positive. We do this because it's easier over very short distances of just a couple meters to measure the offsets than it is to measure the bearing. You'll learn about this in detail in the field. Okay, so that was a lot of stuff to recall. You might want to run through the whole video again until it feels comfortable. Then try out the worksheet to show yourself that you really do get it and that you can use these geometric and trigonometric metric ideas in the forest. When you're in the forest, imagine the triangles, the angles laid out in the FERP, to connect the maps of the trees to the trees growing in the forest. And have fun! Watch out for the FERP Muta Triangle, and happy FERPing!